it's so quiet in here. I know. All right, we still got three minutes then. Did everybody have a good summer? Sure. It's not over yet. It's That's refused, right. I refuse to concede. Yes. Well, we're talking about the next five days being the hottest of the year. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It Above is. 90. Oh, wow. Just, just, just in time for school. school. Exactly. Right. Everyone's vacations are over and school's football. about to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, football, right. Time yeah. you got, Trish. Was your, one of your daughters a uh, count? Call to order the August 19th, 2014 Parks and Rec Board Meeting. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first order of business is a roll call. Mary, please. Um, Chairman Hill is absent tonight. Uh, in his absence, uh, Kurt Volkman. Here. Uh, Member Brush. Here. Member Douglas. Here. Member Jessica. Here. Member Kohlmeyer. Here. Member Walker. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mary. Next item on the agenda, uh, approval of minutes. And we've got several to go through, beginning with the minutes from the May 20th, 2014 board meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'd move to approve as proposed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. The next are the minutes from the May 28th Capital Visioning Workshop. Do I have a motion to approve? I'd move to approve, to approve as proposed. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next to the minutes of the June 17th Parks and Rec Board meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? I so move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. And last, the minutes from the June 26th Parks and Rec Board meeting. And I do have one minor correction, and I know Charlie has a correction as well mine is on the second page of the minutes <coughs> under topic four hole number seven shade issues the first sentence reads director van arsdale informed the ground that there is a shade issue i think that should say the group yeah. and you had a revision as well yes uh i uh i wasn't here unfortunately for that meeting so i couldn't have seconded the uh, adjournment that, that would be um, Member Walker, I believe, was the second for that Want to take credit for that, Scoo? Sure. Uh, second. Let the record show that <laughs> Scoo Walker seconded uh, that motion. So I move to approve as uh, with the two uh, amendments as suggested. Thank you, Dave. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda, opportunity for citizens to address the board on non-agenda items. Do we have any comments from the audience? Very good. Next item on the agenda, report on the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Joint Recreation Task Force report from Ty and Chris. Hi, guys. Welcome. Good. How are you? Great. I will mess it up. <laughs> I'm happy to try. Uh, good evening. Uh, Chris and I are uh, happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> we uh, started this uh, Parks and Rec Task Force so uh, last late October, really got going November, December, 
and it comp is comprised of four members from Lake Forest and four from uh, Lake Bluff, and we have three of the Lake Forest here tonight, myself, Dan, Mike, and Pete Schaefer was the fourth. Uh, Chris uh, was the co-chair from the Lake Bluff side, along with Brock Gordon, who's on the Lake Bluff uh, Park District Board, and Al Tress and Nikki Walsh. So uh, that was the group, and we were greatly assisted, and we had a fun time working with Sally here uh, on the Lake Forest side, and actually Chris and I worked with her a lot uh, around the programs, which you'll hear more about uh, in a few minutes, and then Ed Heiser from the Lake Bluff side. Um, let's click. So um, we were uh, given a charge, uh, respectively, from Lake Forest and Lake Bluff to uh, look for synergies uh, in the parks and recs, park districts, uh, between Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. Uh, it was sort of a broad-based charge, and uh, as such, uh, I have to admit uh, that we as a group sort of uh, floundered uh, at the start. Uh, we didn't really know how to tackle it. We started uh, looking at a lot of things where, you, you know, you always request a bunch of data and you get overwhelmed with data, and uh, then we sort of got lost in the data, and uh, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of sort of freewheeling discussions in the first few sessions. And uh, after a while, we, we realized we weren't really getting anywhere in terms of uh, <clears throat> really tackling what the original objective was, and that was finding synergies and, and other matters. So what we did was we divided uh, the eight of us into uh, four groups, and we focused respectively on, on the programs from the uh, rec centers, uh, fitness, et cetera, uh, the aquatic facility in uh, Lake Bluff, uh, both beaches, and then the golf courses. Now, I'll have to say that a lot of our discussion uh, uh, was around the golf course. And uh, uh, it's nice that Mike's here, and maybe he'll chime in later, uh, as he is on the advisory committee uh, here in Lake Forest. Um, but <clears throat> that said, uh, we got a lot more focus and we did deeper dives in those respective areas and i think it helped us a lot and we worked uh re you know with sally and her team meeting with them and actually sought input uh from her team as well as the park district team uh in the various areas of programs aquatic facility uh beach and, and golf and so uh we we got more well-wounded uh information i guess and from that, we were able to come forward with uh, some of the recommendations that you'll see here tonight. Now, uh, what are our big takeaways? Uh, our big takeaways basically are that uh, while we didn't dig into the numbers, uh, you know, with a fine tooth comb, and it was somewhat difficult when you look at Lake Forest versus Lake Bluff, different reporting, different roll-ups, uh, you know, just aggregated differently. Um, that said, we, we think both operations are, are working on a fairly lean basis. Uh, they've done a pretty good job uh, in controlling their, their headcount, and it's 70% 70, 70 of their costs. I mean, that's pretty uh, much the, the case with all the, uh, the city uh, <clears throat> administrative groups, I understand. Um, but that said, um, we, we we really then sort of focused on the programs, and then more specifically, what we came up with, and it's a, a theme that you'll hear repeatedly here, is, is uh, a drive for more reciprocity of the parks uh, bet you know, between Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. And um, we also, uh, I think we engendered, uh, by having this group get together, engendered uh, more discussion with Sally and Ed uh, between, you know, Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, uh, and hopefully going forward, we have uh, created a, a greater sense of transparency between you two, and I think we, we met with the uh, Lake Bluff Park District last night, and uh, one of the takeaways from that group or the feedback was is, uh, yes, we want to uh, <clears throat> continue this dialogue. And you'll see that uh, further uh, on some of our comments uh, as we go through them. So um, let's hit to the next one. Um, 
you know, operating leanly. We didn't really find any significant low-hanging dollar savings. Um, you know, we did look at the numbers, uh, but <clears throat> where we think there's opportunity is that simply sharing uh, and and collaborating and working more together. Um, on this particular slide, uh, we have some discussion about uh, the golf course operations. It's sort of background, uh, and frankly, we think that the golf operations is bigger than, than this task force. And to a degree, we're gonna kick the can down the road a bit when you see our recommendations. Uh, because we believe that uh, you know more work has to be done in that area, looking at the two combined golf courses uh, going forward in a, in a whole, if you will. Um, <clears throat> as we know, the golf courses are, are not operating <coughs> capacity. Uh, the industry itself has some uh, a bit of a decline. Although I think we heard some numbers last night from uh, Lake Bluff that the rounds are doing okay. Uh, compared to last year, more like, uh, I guess 2012 was a, a banner year, but more like uh, 2011 and 13. Um, but we're, we're not seeing that upward trend that we would all like to see with the golf courses. Um, from a capital point of view, uh, we did look at uh, the, the broad uh, capital plans for each group. Uh, Frankly, there didn't appear to be a whole lot of crossover, but what we thought uh, <clears throat> both groups would be bene benefit by, and that is is to uh, look at any common items and and put them together and try to leverage some savings. You know, re roof replacement as an example. Uh, any other heavy equipment that they, you know, whether it's lawn equipment or, or whatever. Um, try to uh, see if they can uh, put their <clears throat> their needs together in such a way that maybe they can leverage a better buy. So um, um, now, as I stated earlier, we broke it up into four groups: programs, aquatic facility, beach, and golf. I'm going to cover the programs and beach. Chris is going to do the aquatic facility and golf. I think that's the way it lays out. And um, so kick off with uh, the programs. Uh, basically, our primary recommendation here is to uh, create more reciprocity between Lake Bluff and Lake Forest. And with that, we are recommending uh, dropping non-resident fees. Now, there's a cost to that. Um, Lake Forest uh, would lose approximately 15,000, uh, and Lake Bluff would lose 5,000. Not an insignificant number when you look at the respective um, budgets of the two groups. That said, um, we think that from a community point of view, it perhaps could be 20,000 well spent. And also we believe, or we hope, that through uh, enhancement, cross-marketing, um, pushing programs together in some cases, that perhaps we can generate uh, greater uh, usage overall to offset this $20,000 uh, loss in, in, the, uh, in the programs area. Uh, another idea that we came away with was a super pass concept. And, uh, you know, we don't know exactly how that can shake out, but an example would be for the fitness center, a 10 ticket punch for, say, $50, such that uh, a resident of either Lake Forest or Lake Bluff could use both fitness centers should they be in one community or the other. And our poster child is, is Chris in this regard, as he has a son who's in the youth basketball. Oftentimes he's back and forth between uh, the two uh, rec center gyms and you know, dropping his son off to play basketball over here. He could hop in and, and do a, a, a workout uh, while uh, his son is playing the youth basketball. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we thought might be a winner at the outset, but uh, we, we found out that maybe that's not the case, and that is uh, investigating brochure consolidation between the two communities. Um, they're a lot alike when you look at them side by side. Uh, 
And uh, we'd think there's also, if through some consolidation, some cross-marketing opportunities. Uh, the catch is, is that uh, when you combine them, they get bigger and you might have to staple the bindings or whatever, and that leads to higher costs, et cetera, et cetera. So what we thought was a great idea maybe not won't work out in the end. That said, it does need some further look into to see if, if there's ways to, to make the two work better, even if it's only some elements of one, uh, you know, Lake Forest into Lake Buff and vice versa, uh, where it makes sense to uh, cross-market a program or whatever the case may be. Uh, Lake Forest is, is installing the online registration system, uh, and we thought, well, maybe that, that'd be great to put them together, um, but um, Lake Forest is, is ahead of the curve, if you will. So we said, let's defer that and, and let the rec center put that in place Let's not lose the thought, come back to it later with Lake Bluff and, and see if it makes sense for them to, to do uh, the similar system. Um, also, we thought that uh, <clears throat> combining programs uh, would be advantageous. Youth basketball is already being done, and uh, that seems to be a winner. There seems to, uh, the feedback is very positive. Um, dance is very popular here in Lake Forest. Uh, there is some space, we believe, up in Lake Bluff, uh, mm -hmm. such that maybe we can have some excess demand go up there from Lake Forest and, and expand the program a little bit. And also, hopefully, between the two communities, uh, engender just whether it's dance or, or any other program, be the go to programs, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, as opposed to some of the offshoots of uh, some of the uh, private programs that are out there that are competing with with both rec centers so which happens a lot in lake bluff I, I know this jenny's dance studio and i think there are others and it would be great if we could capture as much business as possible um, in the two park districts if it can't be lake bluff well at least it could be lake forest and vice versa um, you know one thing to highlight here in, in terms of awareness we matched up the offerings provided by both park districts, and there are a lot of similarities, of course, but we were also surprised that some things offered point. in one community that, that weren't offered in the other. And examples would be, um, I think we're aware that Lake Bluff has a pool, of course, and there's paddle, um, but I don't think a lot of citizens know that Lake Bluff Park District offers CPR training classes as well as dog obedience classes. Um, Lake Forest, I was surprised to learn, uh, has cross-country ski rentals out at Heller Nature Center. Um, and the Sterling Art Center that we went on the tour of, I was just amazed by the quality of, <coughs> of what's going on over there. There's nothing like that in Lake Bluff. So um, I think if we could build a little more awareness of the offerings of both communities, um, I think we both could benefit. So what are your <clears throat> thoughts on how to do that if we're not quite ready to combine the brochures yet? Are there some websites we can enhance or other ways that we can spread the word about these programs? I mean, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> right. I really timetable for putting together your, your quarterly brochures, but I, I thought some of the discussion we had was is that the two groups would get together because uh, the timing is very similar and look at maybe you know without expanding it doubling the size but but on some focused programs where there's an opportunity uh, and even last night we talked about if with this super pass or or any other our concepts that there'd be a few items that need to be uh, selected if you will for test marketing in 2015 and so it really at this point it's it's up to um, Sally and Ed to work together, Mary and, and Ron, uh, and frankly, Chris and I have offered to sort of continue the process going forward uh, and meet periodically uh, to discuss th those opportunities. So, um, you know, bottom line, TBD. <laughs> yeah. The aquatic. Chris, facility. Chris, um, could you just move up to the mic? They're having a hard time picking you up. Thanks. Wow. That's okay. Thanks. Um, 
we, we were corrected early on. It's not a pool. It's an aquatic facility. And I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, Lake Bluff was very specific about this. Um, we started off um, in the same spirit of reciprocity, trying to offer the pool at resident rates to Lake Forest residents. Um, we ran into a little bit of a roadblock there in, in capturing, trying to capture some data um, on how many Lake Forest folks are using the pool right now, uh, what would the revenue loss be for Lake Bluff. Um, we know what it is for those that buy season passes, but we don't know what it is for the daily use people. Um, so what we decided to do this year in working with the, the folks at the Lake Bluff Park District <coughs> was capture that data and then revisit it at the end of the year and determine what that number would be and if it at all would be possible to offer resident rates to uh, Lake Forest folks going forward. So that's one of the items that, that Ty and I will be following up on uh, towards the end of the year. Um, Just as a note, they commented last night that they actually are doing it. And in the months of July, on a daily basis, if I recall the numbers, uh, it was roughly, um, <clears throat> they have the membership, uh, which is broken down by respective Lake Forest, Lake Bluff. But on the daily usage, they hadn't been. And they are now recording that. And they had something like 500 Lake Bluff daily users in the month of July versus about 125 uh, for Lake Forest. And uh, we Which also kind of surprised us, by the way, that it was one in five. If you look at the relative for us. Uh, populations, uh, it's sort of skewed backwards, if you will. And what's the price differential for Lake Bluff for Lake Forest right now? Good question. Um, I don't know. I'm going to guess point. it's four dollars, maybe, on a oh, daily like pass. Six versus ten, or seven versus ten, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, there really weren't any quick hits with the pool. I mean, I think everyone's aware that there's a referendum going on in Lake Bluff. The pool is part of that referendum. Um, everything's kind of on hold in Lake Bluff until they figure out uh, the results of that. So, um, you know, we focused on, on the data collection. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, working with Lake Forest to see if uh, when you guys do your next survey, and Mary, I don't know when that might be and when your last one was, but maybe if we could include some questions about the pool and, and um, a level of interest from Lake Forest folks in using a pool. Um, I think, Sally, that, that you mentioned that you, you know, get calls every once in a while from new folks moving in and that uh, there has been consistent interest over the years. So we just thought we'd, you know, again, collect more data on that. Um, the bottom bullet point, you know, again, this uh, super pass concept that we talk about, that maybe there's some way to combine pool usage with fitness and beach and some other things. Um, more work needs to be done on that, though. But no real quick hits on the pool. I mean, it, it needs dollars right now, and, you know, they're, they're trying to uh, literally plug a hole. So until they figure that out, there's not a whole lot to do with the pool. And, and to that point, uh, just covering the second to last bullet point, um, sorry. Uh, we have had some discussion in, in our task force uh, about raising the awareness here in Lake Forest about possible uh, help or stewardship uh, or partnership, however you want to, in, in helping maintain that pool as we look to only have one pool for both communities. It's probably never going to happen having a pool here in Lake Forest, even though apparently, I don't know how many times it's three or four referendums, it's 51, 49, uh, no to yes, I guess. Uh, but the practicality of that is, 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 in my opinion, not great. Uh, and thus, perhaps uh, we could uh, share some of the responsibility here from a Lake Forest uh, with Lake Bluff uh, we broached that with a discussion that we had uh, with Bob Kiley and Don uh, when we met with them separately and they, they didn't uh, keel over or, or totally <laughs> blanch. So uh, it's something we're throwing out there. Um, you know, uh, how much you know, we want to get involved uh, from a Lake Forest side, don't know. 
but uh, the group, the task force, thought it was something uh, worthy to have further discussion on. Sure. Um, Beach. Two uh, uh, different and, and unique assets. I mean, the Lake Bluff Beach, for those of you that have been down there, is, uh, has a very different feel from the Lake Forest Beach. Um, and our feeling was, how great would it be if, if, as residents of both communities, you could use both? Um, and again, do it at resident rates. Um, I was surprised to learn that Lake Forest offers um, the beach at no cost to Lake Bluff residents and maybe all other communities too, or is it just Lake Bluff? Uh, Monday through Friday? Right. Uh, all. Um, so no charges to use the beach. I had no idea. Um, and I still haven't taken advantage of that, but <laughs> maybe one of these summer days I will. Um, Lake Bluff charges non-resident rates um, during the week. So our first thought was, all right, well, let's just open up Lake Bluff. and. That led to a lot of talk about, well, where are all these people going to park? And, you know, we only have residential streets in Lake Bluff to handle all the cars. And, well, what if a whole bunch of Lake Bluff folks go into Lake Forest? We don't have any parking with Forest Beach and, or Forest Park? Park. Forest Park. And, um, you know, where are all those cars going to go? So we, we kept focusing on, on parking. It kept coming up. And, and I don't know why people can't just ride their bikes or, <laughs> or walk or, or park at the train station, but, but parking just seems to be a roadblock. So where am I going to um, put all my noodles if I'm trying to write? That's that? right. <laughs> Maybe store them down there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so we, we uh, decided to, to not tackle the parking issue, um, focusing uh, on the Lake <clears throat> Bluff side. Uh, again, tracking. We don't know right now how many folks from Lake Forest are coming and using the beaches in Lake Bluff. Again, we don't know what the revenue impact would be if we um, offer them resident rates, which is basically charging nothing. So we, we've asked Lake Bluff to track that like they're doing at the pool. Again, we will come back and, and use that data to come to uh, some better recommendations here. Uh, looking at the first bullet point, one thing that we focused on right away um, in talking with the, the folks that run the Lake Forest and Lake Bluff beaches is a, a real quick one is doing some cross training and sharing of lifeguards. And it's something that they've uh, already talked together about. I don't think they've implemented anything yet this year. We learned that last night, right? Okay. Um, but it is something on the table and, and everyone seems to think that's a very good idea. If we're short of lifeguards in Lake Bluff, maybe we can pull some from Lake Forest, vice versa. Uh, and the cross training seemed to be a good idea. So that's something that, that likely will be done next year. Um, the fourth bullet point, um, I, I'm not sure how often this ever happens, but if for some reason the Lake Forest Beach is closed and the Lake Bluff Beach is open, we should open it up uh, at no charge to the Lake Forest residents on those days and vice versa. Um, capital equipment, you know, we talked about sharing uh, beach grooming equipment came up as one idea. Um, how you would ever transport that from one beach to another, I have no idea. We don't have a barge that runs between the two, but um, you know, if, if there are ways to share any of those larger capital expenses, it's something that uh, the two communities should be talking about at least. So um, something to explore going forward. Anything else on beach? Maybe it's a question for Mary. Has that ever happened where the Lake Forest Beach is closed, but the Lake Bluff Beach is open? Yes. Yes, we have different runoff uh, challenges, um, you know, for the two different communities, depending on rain, storms, or what's happening north of the two communities sometimes. So occasionally. Not, not very often, though. It does happen. And then two different prediction systems as well. So Lake Bluff is on Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Lake Bluff could be closed and Lake Forest be opened just based on the prediction systems. Interesting. Thanks. Okay, uh, the last uh, area is, is golf. And what we tried to do here is, is break it down into uh, short, mid, and long-term recommendations. And uh, what we had intended or hoped for uh, in the short run uh, was to uh, <clears throat> this season uh, put in 
uh, uh, super or not super, but a ten punch pass system, or uh, and or eliminate non resident fees between Lake Forest, Lake Lake Bluff at Deer Path and and uh, Lake Bluff golf courses. Uh, unfortunately, by the time we sort of got to the point uh, we were well into the season and it seemed uh, something that uh, was too late to try. That said, we definitely think it's something that quote unquote should be teed up for uh, 2015. Uh, we think that we could uh, engender greater usage uh, between the two communities and two golf courses. Uh, right now, Lake Bluff has uh, a reciprocity plan with with Deerfield. Uh, so if something's going on at Lake Bluff, they say, oh, go over to Deerfield. Well, why don't you go over to Deer Path? So why don't we make those types of connections? Um, one good example that they have done where the golf courses are split up and sharing was the high school was all at Lake Bluff, uh, both the boys and the girls programs. Uh, but the girls program has become so popular and <clears throat> When you had both groups out there, it was just overwhelming for Lake Bluff. So uh, by discussion and, and agreement, the girls are all now at Deer Path. And it's a nice balance uh, for the high school. Uh, and you know it, it's just logistically easier all the way around for the respective teams and the courses. So um, point being there is, is through discussion and, and through working together, uh, we can find some opportunities where, you know, facilitate greater usage. Now, uh, midterm, and we define that as by the end of 2014, was to initiate or put together a, a joint plan for the golf courses. And um, first, it would start with creating a, a joint Lake Forest, Lake Bluff advisory committee. Now, as I stated earlier, Mike's on the on the Deer Path Advisory Committee here for Lake Forest, there isn't one for Lake Bluff. Um, and so we are recommending, and, and the feedback to that was positive last night with the uh, Lake Bluff Board to create uh, an advisory committee for the Lake Bluff Golf Course on their side, and that the two get together and, and in turn start working together um, to um, create a vision, if you will, for how to best utilize the two golf courses together, which is, in fact, our longer term um, <clears throat> recommendation here. And with that, we're suggesting that uh, it would probably be appropriate to um, hire uh, an outside uh, um, consultant, uh, not a third party provider, but a, a consultant, a golf consultant, to look at the respective operations of both golf courses and uh, provide some input about uh, where, how they think it, it should work best in terms of operation, meaning operate it on your own, uh, operate it by a provider, operate them together with a provider, any combination of those, those items. Um, point being is, once again, coming back to looking at them together. We think that we can leverage and, and create uh, greater usage, um, you know, reaching out to the, the communities uh, around us and saying, hey, we got two courses here that we can, can market together uh, to fit your, your needs in the best manner. So um, that's our, our, our golf. Mike, while you're here, do you have any comments you want to throw in? OK. Um, so from an overall point of view, uh, it, we are saying let's have greater transparency of operations between the groups. Uh, I think uh, that has already started uh, in some fundamental ways. Uh, we don't want to lose that. We want to keep it going. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, last night uh, the park board at Lake Bluff was receptive to keeping that going together. I know that Chris and I have said that we would meet with Mary and, and Ron and Ed and Sally on an ongoing basis to, to ensure that we keep the ball rolling on some of these ideas. Um, so that's out there. Um, <clears throat> we also, um, you know, coming down to hard dollar savings, 
um, that's that's very open ended, and that would require a lot of uh, of digging into the numbers, which we didn't think uh, we were actually capable of doing or had the time to do. Uh, but frankly, it's probably not going to uh, be possible unless we think of the two communities doing more along uh, combinations of services, not just you know be sort of the the uh, tail of the dog wagging here uh, with the parks uh, starting with it. But it really needs to come down from the top, and, and whether it's you know starting with you know the uh, the fire, or, you know somewhat like the nine. Uh, one one, that same concept, but more broad base, including all operations of both cities, in, in including uh, the respective uh, parks and recs. So uh, that's out there. Uh, if it if it happens, it, we think perhaps you will get some hard dollar savings. Uh, finally, uh, we talked about uh, creating a survey uh, to understand. Uh, uh, the interest about reciprocity and cost-sharing opportunities, and uh, I think that will be fit into the next uh, survey that's uh, going to be issued by the uh, Parks and Rec. So with that, um, that basically concludes our um, <coughs> little presentation, so we're happy to field any and all questions. Thank you, Ty and Chris, and the rest of the um, task force you did some good work some good analysis some good recommendations i guess my question again might go to mary or sally what's next I mean, they kind of laid out the recommendations which i think there's a lot of good <coughs> ones there we want to keep the momentum going so what do, what do we plan to do here in lake forest well i think that um the next step would be the four of us um as staff to meet with ty and chris and i think there's some timing things that we can take into consideration and lay out kind of a next steps based on what's going on um, either in our budget preparation or our policy processes that we have in our two communities and kind of prioritize some of these and, and make sure that we're all on the same page on what we can do. As I mentioned, they have some data collection, um, both entities, we've done some data collection and we need to finish through Labor Day on some of those and we can use those to incorporate them. So I think we need to kind of lay out um, a schedule of what we think we can tackle and when and bring those and share those with the, with the board so that you guys can see that those are um, on track and basically call it a mini strategic plan related to how to keep the the uh, task force uh, efforts you know front and foremost and some of the opportunities that we have so you know some of them are very exciting to staff um, you know to consider and some of them just you know it's nice having outside view at it I mean we should have thought of possibly the pos training guards together instead of separately you know it's just some simple things like that it's really just nice to go oh that that really does make sense um, some of the others I think will be you know more challenging and we well, do have to take into consideration like different things the communities are a little bit different paths right now for they've got a referendum we're working on a golf you know, uh, management structure right now. So I think we need to lay that out. But I, I think this is great work. Um, I'm really pleased with what they, you know, su suggesting. I think we've always viewed each other as sister cities in some way. So why not try to, you know, share as much as possible? And um, I know from our end going into the budget process, this was really good timing because if we think we're going to do reciprocity with reducing non-resident fees, we need to know that as part of our process. So, um, so that's. I think um, September will be meeting us. Ron, um, Ron sent me an email last night, and um, that was his suggestion, was trying to get us together in early September and then maybe bring something back for the board in October um, on that. Great, thank you. So, Mary, is this uh, the work moving forward? Is that required to be board approved by both? Lake Forest and Lake Bluff, or is it more informational? Where um, it will depend. I mean, if it's sharing of marketing, you know, opportunities, it wouldn't require board approval per se. But if it's policy or fee based, it would come back to you guys. And you know, obviously, we would like to keep you in the loop and apprised of what we are working on. Um, as we mentioned, we started with some of the programs that we saw a while back by putting the numbers together. It made sense. So now we can kind of talk about the shared facilities aspects and. You know that that does change our operation and we certainly want to share that with you and make sure we haven't missed you know we have your concerns or your your enthusiasm you know to kind of hear what your thoughts are on all of those so um, so I, I think that was where I would say we we're we're going next um, we needed to yeah, get from this a report. process point of view last night with the Lake Bluff board um, 
they accepted our recommendation report, if you will, but uh, not all members were present. So when they come back in September, there'll be a full discussion and a more formal acceptance, I guess, is how they're going to do it. But with that, us and you know, we're going to meet still. Other questions? Thank you again, Ty and Chris, and really appreciate your offer to stay connected through this process. We sure can use your help, so thanks again. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. And I would just add, it was really a pleasure to work with both of you and to get to know you better. Um, <clears throat> but thank you for your leadership through that program. Sure. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, guys. Next item on the agenda is uh, advisory authorization to expend capital funds and award the contract to Vermont Systems for the new software for the rec system or the rec department. Mary? Okay, um, I just wanted to uh, um, walk through, if you will, the VSI project. That is Vermont Systems Incorporated. They are a company we're looking at for our new software at the rec center. And I know we spent a great deal of time on this topic at our uh, June 17th meeting, so I won't rehash all of that. But um, for those at home, we have been in a process that was um, started last fall, and we've been working through it all winter, which was defining our needs for um, the software at the rec center, as well as some um, software that benefit other departments throughout the city um, because the current software provider we have right now um, they are uh changing their versions and no longer support the version that we're on and to move up to the next version with them was extremely costly because it was a per transaction based software so that was kind of what drove us to start looking at this so we did a full rfp and um and went through that process uh, earlier this fall so um, uh, we brought to you in june the vendors that we did get back from doing the rfp for our software these were the different companies um, as pointed out at the june meeting um, there was really only three companies that uh, bid on the project because that provided comprehensive potential services that was active e track and Vermont systems and active is who we currently have now um, and Volgistics which is the bottom one listed there they were a best of breed just on a volunteer um, software component only and so they really aren't apples to apples up there but um, we wanted to list them as part of the uh, the overall uh, bids we received in the e track though it was the lowest bid that we had up there um, staff recommended and board supported as did City Council um, not working with them um, and going with Vermont systems because Vermont system or e track had uh, so much customization in order to meet our specifications that we were unsure whether they could deliver um, the software needs that we had and there would be um, some unknowns as far as the cost associated to get all those customizations done so um, we did choose to go with Vermont systems and Vermont systems also um, presented the best comprehensive uh, detail package to us so those were the um, the bid results there there's two different for Vermont one was the uh, VH which is virtually hosted um, and the other one was OP which is on-premise and so you'll see in this uh, next um, slide we had not decided this in June which direction that we were going to go with that and we decided um, to uh, recommend to you and to City Council that we go with on-premise hosting um, the reason for that it is a lower cost option for us over the next 10 years to do that we have the capacity existing within our current server environment so um, it really eliminates our need to have to go out and purchase other servers um, and in addition to that um, the vendor hosted is not as desirable because when they make their um, upgrades which they do major ones every two to three years um, when you are there, they're hosting us, then we're the first ones who get that rolled out every time. And so we would be the ones always working through all of the bugs and the systems. So we would prefer to not do that and be um, one of the later ones in that process. So that's another reason we're recommending um, at this time to go with the on-premise. So having said that, um, we are looking at purchasing modules that um, are listed up here. It's for all of our business transactions. Uh, it's the rec track and web track, which is primarily our activity 
activity registration and our family databases, our ID cards, which is the digital um, cards like you have for fitness memberships um, that you swipe things for, um, the pay track, which is our interface um, that allows us to do the um, uh, financial component of it and then we have the access control which is a small component of what we currently have it at our fitness center door so members can swipe with their card and get in and out of the locker rooms versus having it staff attended um, the main track which is one i'm very excited about this is a maintenance management work order system and we currently uh, do not have that in the city and we we have one that's defunct it's called um, city works but this would be a citywide uh, work ma management system um, which is terrific because it also has mobile capabilities so staff can do inspections in the field or see work that they're doing or have a work order that they're supposed to be completing and with using their smartphone um, or a tablet they can uh, update and change and log all of their time and the work that they've done they can also use their mobile devices to take a picture if it's a hazard and put it right into a file for us so we can uh, track that kind of thing and this would be used by public works um, and throughout their departments as well as parks forestry and um, some other departments of fire and police should they choose to um, so we're really excited about that one uh, the mobile web track I already mentioned but that the um, the one thing we're really excited about it too is it will allow our residents to register online using any mobile device. They wouldn't have to be just on their computer. They can use their phones now, um, and so that's pretty exciting. And um, or their iPods, that kind of thing. So the financial impact here is a summary chart for you of uh, the price quote. So as part of the contract negotiation that you saw in your packet, uh, we have been working with them to uh, refine these numbers and really make sure that we had everything identified on here for all the modules that I just mentioned, as well as some of the additional costs that the city has to do for um, various items. So from the VSI perspective, it's 143999 and that's broken down there for you. The city would have um, some additional costs, which is some of the peripherals that we would buy through our own existing contracts, like for the mobile phone or an iPad phone. Um, we have to pay for interfaces between SunGuard, which is our um, financial general ledger um, and accounts receivable interface, and then it should say plug and pay instead of play um, but that is the interface uh, for the credit cards and then the final item is some contingency um, we do want to have some contingency in contingency in there in case when we start laying out some of the workstations or we have you know some things that may not uh, route properly that we have the capability of of staff time as well as um, some minor work on that the other um, uh, thing that we don't have is shipping costs for some of the different things that we may be getting in. So it's a, a, a placeholder for that. Um, so altogether, the grand total for the project that we're seeking uh, approval on is $173,276. And um, we had a budget of, of uh, $290,000 for the overall project. So we're very pleased at where the numbers are coming in. The two ninety dollars was what um, we work with a software consultant who initially suggested that we plug in that a dollar amount as a placeholder. So we're actually pl uh, very pleased to see that come in at a much lower price. Um, and so we would be uh, you know, seeking approval to go forward with this. If you do um, grant approval with a con contract tonight, we would take it to City Council September 2nd with um, then the implementation schedule will be uh, starting to work on through the statement of work document, which was included in your packet as well, um, with the, the um, V3 version, which is their newest version. And so we're going to let them roll that out to all their new clients. So we would be looking at um, not implementing the new software um, in until probably in around January, and then rolling it out in phases um, based on when our registration key periods are and, and working the behind the scenes of lay, uh, putting together all the drop down menus and selections and things like that. So um, we have a lot of work to do this fall if approved. Um, we're very excited about it. The whole team is excited about it, but um, probably a year from now we would have all, all modules rolled out and everything functional and, and full, you know, using full capacity of the system. Any questions? So, Mary, the um, great job. I mean, this looks very, very well put together. I just have a couple of questions. Does this include a sufficient number of seat licenses 
for all of the staff so when you talk about certain of the stuff would go to public works or sure. other departments and so what we've got encompassed in here will get everything that you think from a seat license perspective we do we um we bought uh, we're going to be buying for rec track um 26 concurrent licenses which depending on how long you're on the system allows anywhere from um, uh, 100 to 500 people at one time concurrently which we think will be more than enough during our peak days the main track uh, we can use again this the same volume of concurrent licenses is available for all the systems so again um, depending on how long they're on there their um, devices doing work order systems we can add to that and the nice thing with their concurrent it's only it's a one-time three hundred dollar additional license um, uh, upgrade for that so um, that's that's a really nice feature the other the other feature they have is if we have peak times of registration we can rent concurrent licenses and it's very inexpensive it's hundred and eighty dollars per day for um, up bumping up our concurrent licenses by a thousand at an increment at a time so it really is a nice thing that we don't have to buy it for the maximum days instead we can buy it for our typical and rent out when we need those additional licenses right. so and then the second part is just ongoing license costs that we're signing up for in years two through however mm -hmm. and do we get maintenance and software upgrades and the like, or is this really just the base jumping off number that we'll um, have to address then? Um, in the 10-year cumulative, we did include all the upgrades going forward. Um, the, the estimated, they estimated all their maintenance costs with a 3% increase annually. Um, they also included costs in the 10-year window that would show um, what their major upgrades uh, during those odd those years when those would happen are in there so this is a cumulative including those items David yep, what what might not happen or might might not be in there is let's say because you know this is 10 years and sometimes devices completely change if we went to a new peripheral device that wouldn't be in here and that would be an operating cost for that year to, to swap it out Very related to that question um, I'm very excited about this, by the way, and I think, again, I agree it's a, it's a very uh, good package you put together. But when there's these new capabilities and new devices come in play, there's always a need to do training. Mm -hmm. And are we comfortable that there's sufficient budget in this amount, not only for the park staff, but for Public Works and everybody else that's going to be asked to start doing things differently now, mm -hmm. including reporting time and all that kind of stuff? We do have in the price quote, we worked with not only our um, consultant plant, Moran, who gave us advice on the volume of training time, as well as Vermont Systems gave us recommendations based on what they felt was the time. So we, we do feel that we have enough time for the initial training rollouts through this next year built into this price. Um, we do have a per hour additional fee should we want to go beyond that if we find a need so we we lock them in for a price related to that um, as well the um, uh, the interesting thing was one of the big negotiation items we had was future training costs and we did put language in there that locked them into they had to use economy travel as an example their per day rates um, needed to be within a, a acceptable range based on the city's um, travel policies so we do have at least some assurances of what the costs um, amount might be but anything that we do let's say in a year from now we find out we have so many new desk staff that it's advantageous to bring them back here and do a training we would have to put that in our operational budgets so but the nice thing um, we were just talking today I guess um, it was uh, Terry Lorela is that Vermont has other clients in the area as an example uh, Libertyville is currently considering going with VSI as well um, and so when we have opportunity to share trainings with the bringing them from Vermont here we'll try to tandem that with another client in the area so that we can split those kind to travel costs so um, those are those opportunities uh, Buffalo Grove Wilmette uh, Glenview uh, they're all um, Deerfield they're all VSI so it'll be a nice nice aspect to be able to do that I just have one more question tying sure. it back to our last agenda item presumably this software platform is sufficiently scalable to draw in Lake Bluff at some point if we get to that stage um, yes, programs? Um, it could be the challenges we're going to have and um, I'm not an expert at this by any means, but it's really going to be um, some of the languages that we are not allowed to 
issue this to a third party vendor. License. Yeah. And um, pay their licenses. They right. Be able to pick up the extra. Right. Programs and Possibly the other challenge you have is the financial account accounting systems um, and the interfaces and stuff and creating that. So that is, those are quite intricate and very somewhat difficult to do. Um, but it's not. I haven't had that conversation in detail yet with them, so we'll have to see where that would take us. But it, it might be possible to do it. I wouldn't rule it out, but there's some challenges. Other questions? So what do you need from us tonight, Mary? Um, I need uh, just of you guys to um, recommend whoops, um, to council the award of the contract to the Vermont Systems for replacement of the Parks and Rec software at the expense of 143999 and the city additional expense of 29277 for the total project to be funded from our Parks and Rec Fund 220. So we need a voice vote on that? We do. Okay. So moved as uh, for the recommendation as Mary just articulated it. Thank you, David. Second. 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 All in okay. favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We have your recommendation. We Thank you, Mary. Thanks. And I'm up on the next one, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the inaccessory property sale. Um, uh, this chart up here is just kind of walking us back a little bit on the um, Innesis Array. As you might know, that's our North Suburban Special Rec Association. They are a partner for providing um, uh, facilities and programs for uh, 13 communities, and we're one of them for people with uh, special needs. And uh, we started working with that. Well, we've been working with them for a very long time. But in September of 2011, um, they amended their articles and agreement, which came through this board. And you saw those, and that's. Um, really relayed out our city participation in NSSRA. Um, and then in March of 2013, um, they brought their park, their uh, facility acquisition plan here before the board to have a chance to take a look at that. And that was driven by the fact that um, uh, there was a number of capital items coming forward for their administration office, which is located in Northbrook in an industrial complex. And believe it or not, as a special rec association, it does not meet ADA code. And so, in, a, and in addition to that, there was a number of larger um, capital items that were out on the horizon that we would potentially have to start saving money for and putting money towards those down the road. And the board at that time said, you know, is this the long-term direction that we really want to do to reinvest in this space? And so there was first a needs assessment, um, facility assessment done of the existing property um, to identify all the needs. And then from that um, came back and the board recommended that there was a, um, a facility acquisition plan created in order to create and locate or to locate a permanent long-term home for NSSRA. So we brought that facility acquisition plan before the park and rec board in March of 2013 and you saw it the first time around and then in September of 2013 after all of the partner agencies had seen it we brought it back to boards and said you know we made a few minor tweaks in there and asked you to approve uh, endorsing their facility acquisition plan which includes a small line item for the city of Lake Forest and capital around $13,000 which comes out of our special recreation levy to help put money aside for their future acquisition so um, and that was also shared shared with the Public Works Committee of the city um, in February as part of our ADA plan and we showed in there um, you know the the line item at that point in time so that's kind of where uh, we started and I, I told you back in um, in 2013 with uh, and Craig Culp who was here that this is a long-term process it's there's lots of different steps to go along this process to move them in a direction of eventually being able to um, acquire a new home so um, what I was asking or seeking the park board tonight is in order to petition um, the Cook County Circuit Court because that's where they're in that particular county to um, allow them the authority the legal authority should the opportunity arise to sell their property um, and uh, this is a paperwork step that we're trying to do. This is not meaning that this board in any way is saying that they can go forward with and sell the property without bringing it back here. It's just putting the authority to, for them to submit the paperwork to the circuit court. So um, they're still, we're still ways out from finding a facility. There's nothing that um, is in the works other than that we are in discussion potentially with the Northbrook Park District, um, who is looking at the opportunity to buy Five Seasons Club. It's a referendum for them in November. And if that was to go through, we think that it would be a great 
partnership opportunity for NSSRA. It's very central to all the partners. Um, and we have, there's adequate land and property and already existing space to retrofit that could be a great home and great fit for them. Um, the other option we've been investigating a little bit is um, with Highland Park. Um, the, there's a coalition of special need uh, entities in their community that's looking to possibly partner on a new facility. Um, they have wrestled, however, we're the only organization who has been able to identify a committed funding stream for such um, a building. And um, they don't, uh, we're fortunate too that the NSSRA Foundation has stepped up greatly and is committed to funding almost half of the building for NSSRA going forward. So we're in a really good spot, um, but this is a paperwork detail that just we don't want to, if the opportunity opportunity arises, we want to keep moving this forward. So, so tonight I'm just asking for Park Board um, authorization to take this to Council then and um, make them aware that we'd like to, to file this with the Circuit Court, the petition with the Circuit Court. So is your understanding that once that approval is so obtained, it's good indefinitely until they find this, uh, the purchaser that they that's want that's my understanding I'm not that familiar with that but um, I know that's what the legal counsel suggested that we put that in place other questions so you need a voice vote approving yeah just a yeah motion in a second we have a motion the motion to recommend that the city join and sign all the necessary paperwork for the petition to the circuit court to authorize the sale at some point in the future of the NSSRA headquarters. You're awesome. Thank you. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We were the last last board to approve this for them so they can get they can get it filed now so <laughs> well, actually once city council approves it we have to get city council to approve it first then we can file but um thank you thanks mary next on the agenda is a update on what's going on at deer path hi jeff good evening how's everyone tonight good good Excellent. good so my spotlight is on uh, deer path golf course uh, fiscal uh, year 15 <coughs> first quarter that's May June and July uh, performance it's a, it is unaudited so we haven't gotten the we did not have the final numbers from finance before uh, we submitted this but um, so this is for informational purposes only there is no action required tonight so um, we began the uh, season off uh, pretty wet um, we had a lot of um, uh, rain, we had closures due to uh, flooding. Uh, we had low play uh, in May, probably the, the lowest uh, number of membership rounds in the, in the past five years, second lowest revenue in, in, the, uh, in the past five years. June did not um, come out any better than May. We still had a lot of um, rain, we had closures. And then uh, July, um, actually all three months we saw uh, our daytime highs uh, below uh, history averages, our nighttime lows were well below um, averages um, for that time of the year. And the, because of the uh, strong winter that we had, um, such a deep freeze in, in the soil temperatures, it took a very long time for that soil temperature to raise up to a, a temperature between 61, 65 degrees for new um, seed to germinate, grow, sprout, take hold. So we took a lot, it took a lot of time for us to repair the winter damage that we saw. Um, we are actually our own worst enemy when, when we talk about um, damage because we saw a lot of the, the damage from the cross country ski trails that we do, the grooming that we do. You can see the tire tracks. What happens is we see the, the uh, tires go over the snow, it freezes, it, it melts, freezes again, that gets down into the, the grass and, and it kills it. So we, mm. we see that sort of thing. So um, so it just took a lot of time. I think we didn't, we didn't get into the, the, the soil temperatures until the first week, first 10 days of June. So um, it was quite a season for Tommy and his crews. The, the, uh, the flooding really put... Um, uh, constraints on how much maintenance that we can do. Then we had to clean up from the, um, the flooding, which put off some of the, uh, the, 
the cutting that he normally does, the grooming of the, the rest of the course. So we look at the, um, the seasonal membership comparison and we are um, a seeing a, an industry trend. We are losing membership um, numbers. Um, what we see here is actually two things are occurring. One, we're seeing a lot of our senior members drop off mostly due to uh, medical reasons. They're, uh, if they're not able, if they are able to play, they're just uh, paying a daily fee. And we see that our uh, single residents um, are reaching that age where they now qualify for the senior rate, so they're filling in to those, those, um, those spots. So what you see is uh, not a 22, 22 um, loss on single residents, um, but they are filling in those spaces for the, um, the um, excuse me, the senior residents. Um, if we look at the... Are you yeah. saying we have no... Uh, Seasonal memberships of non-residents? No, we have non-residents, um, non-residents, senior. Seasonals? Yes, seasonal, yes. So they don't now, show up on it? Pardon me, yeah, they do. It's, um, it's a separated amount. There's the. Where are they? Bottom there's half. senior, there's the, uh, the combo non-residents. Oh, I see what you're saying. There's no, I, I couldn't find it. Oh, that's a, um, uh, it's not there because we don't have any single uh, non-resident memberships. That's why it's not there. Just combos and seniors. Yeah. yeah so I didn't. I didn't put. Them, I didn't put it on there because it's. It would just is, be is, zero. Is that, is that a big switch? Because in the past we've had a lot of people that play both days on the weekends that are not residents Right? Is that coming to an end? I would have to look at the history. I didn't. Um, I didn't look at it um, prior to that, so I'm not really sure. So. Okay, thank you. But that's a. What's that's a combo non-resident? Nice spouse. Nice I think so, yeah. That's a combo is, is a couple? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Two from the same household. So there's no single non resident? No. Nor was there last Would year. Would that be in limited right. play? I, uh, you know what? I will um, check the numbers that, um, that I had to make sure that that's accurate. But I'm, I did not see a, a, a non resident single on there, so. We'll look. Oh, I can get back to everyone. So overall, we look at um, the revenue. Um, as a, a total revenue, we are down 5% uh, over last year. Uh, we're down considerably where we thought we were going to be. Cause, so we're at um, 650000 where we thought we would be at 732. Um, this is actually better than the uh, National Gal Golf Foundation's estimate for the Chicagoland area, which uh, anticipates about an 8% drop. In revenue, so we're doing a little bit better than others, but not where we really want to. And the big drivers are again the, the seasonal fee allocation. We're down four percent, and then the merchandise sales. And talking with Rick Walrath, who's the general manager, um, that really stems from the big box realtors having a. Um, a backlog of a lot of equipment. They're discounting a lot of uh, a lot of equipment, so you know they are able to deal in a bigger volume, which are able to get bigger discounts, which we're not able to offer. So we're just not seeing uh, people buying as much as they had in the past this year around. So um, instruction is um, doing really well. We did um, have a great season this year. We had um, a lot of return uh, players or campers from, from last year, a lot of new people this year. We did a price structuring that hopefully tried to push people out from the mornings to the afternoons and then from our first session to our second and third and it didn't, didn't budge the needle at all. <laughs> we saw we were, we were jammed uh, on the course, but the course handled it very well. We opened a little area just off of one for some uh, drills and um, some swing um, uh, practice, that sort of thing. So um, overall rounds, we're just down almost 2% from last year. Um, we are um, slowly creeping that back up a little bit. The nice thing to, to uh, highlight here is our um, average green fee is we anticipate last year, excuse me, Last year we were at uh, 2142. Uh, this year we're at um, 2307. So 
We are getting more out of our players when they come. Um, that is due to um, a better utilization of the uh, dynamic pricing. Rick is um, really good at um, keeping an eye on other courses, see what they're doing, trying to match up with what they're doing, or looking at our T sheet and trying to open up um, play by kind of bringing the dollar amounts down, that sort of thing. So, a couple questions on instruction. Yeah. Um, first, why is there no budget budgeted yeah, item for that instruction? Yeah, we, um, we, we didn't anticipate um, what we thought we were going to do. It was one of the things that we just, we thought we, that's just an actual dollar amount. We didn't really kind of think where we were going to be after, at the first, the first quarter. So, but based on the 189,000 last year, we could have had a placeholder, right? Right. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. And do we have any thoughts on why the increased interest in lessons is not translating into increased play? Because these I are mostly I would think the juniors. idea would be you come take a lesson, you go play around. And I hope they're not taking a lesson, going to play around at another course. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Um, Part of the, the program is um, they do a lot of on-course play with the instructors, so they're, getting, they're, they're playing actual playing holes. Playing while getting, they're learning. Yeah, and then every Friday they do a tournament day, so where the older kids are actually playing, so they're getting around in on Friday. So, you know, but we are keeping them there a little bit longer, that sort of thing, but I'm not... The other, know, the other thing I've seen, if you play there midday during the week, is the kids that are there in the, for the morning session, a lot of them have lunch and then have an afternoon tea time and go out and play. Right. And so I'm assuming they're seasonal membership. So, uh, so we're getting rounds from them and stuff in the, in the, in the lunch room, but uh, right. you see that all the There's time. no incremental revenue. Right. Well, if, they're, uh, if they're a season pass holder, right? Right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Jeff, is that instruction, that's, that's kids and adults? Is there a breakout? Uh, no, that is both um, the camp and lesson revenue, individual how lessons. Many, how many participants to the camp this year? Uh, for the total three for the, sessions? For the, for the nine session. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure. I did not pull that number out. So it's close to, we, we on average have about 35 per session so 70 in the first session because that was full so we're talking almost uh, probably 150 160 uh, campers okay and, yeah. and those were roughly almost a thousand bucks a piece right uh no Close. no yeah the first session is more like 1300 the last session in the afternoon is 900 that's why we price it so that we, we shift them out of that, that morning, first session. The biggest chunk of the lessons money has to be the schools. Huh? It is. Far it is. Can you, can you have that, do you have it broken down by um, group? Not with me, but I can, I can get it. Yeah. I'd be curious to see that because there are okay. adults out there. Yeah, we just kind of grouped them in, into uh, one category. So we look at um, expenses year to date. Um, we're doing uh, really well as compared to last year for administration uh, and maintenance. Uh, the big thing on uh, maintenance is really we're not using, we didn't have to use as much water in, in Maine and June, uh, but um, that's uh, Too much. recently gonna mm -hmm. kind of creep back up a little bit. Um, the clubhouse, uh, there is a big difference here and that big difference is last year, uh, for the payments to the independent contractor for the lesson program, we, um, we generate a purchase order and then we spend off of that purchase order throughout the year. Well, we, I did not estimate the proper amount of what I was going to need, so I spent the money that was on the purchase order pretty quickly um, and then just started paying out individually um, individual um, invoices. This year, I may have overestimated a little bit, so that's why that $141 swing. But because um, we, you know, we do anticipate, um, you know, we still have uh, after the fall and spring after school 
uh, golf uh, lessons, and we still have winter and spring individual lessons that we still have to go through. What's, so. what's in the clubhouse, compiles the clubhouse numbers? Well, I'm sorry? What compiles the clubhouse numbers? Uh, as far as expenses, um, you're talk, there's a seasonal staff. Um, their, their wages are in there. There's minor equipment, building maintenance, contractual services, water, electricity, gas, all those things. Kemper, Kemper is in there too, right? Kemper is part of, yes, that is. It's in the um, contractual services. Yeah. So that, that number you, also includes Just look at, the, at, at what, you've, what you've booked for lessons right now. If the course gets 25% of that, 150,000 of this 414 is going to the, the lessons people, right? Right. It would. So the, the numbers but, look a lot different than if you look at it that way. Right. right. Explain that to me again. The course gets 25% of roughly of the lesson money. Right. And we said we had $216,000 worth of revenue from lessons in the first quarter. So 75% of that shows up here. This is going to the contractor. Sure. Right. 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 And so the course picked up 50000 yeah. bucks of additional revenue. Right. Without, without additional spending that people that are doing the lessons have or aren't doing. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah. So, so administration is what? Administration is, um, there's some of uh, Mary's, my salaries in there, uh, Social Security, Workman's Comp, uh, unemployment, not Workman's Comp, um, unemployment, medical, dental. All the health and then the full-time salaries debt. of the um, maintenance staff are in that budget as well. Right. I know we've got a meeting coming up in a couple of weeks to drill deeper into this. It, to me, it's really important that we have a lot more, a better, much better understanding of what's going on here. This is right. this is very untransparent to me. Okay. Um, so sure. I, hopefully, in two weeks when we have that next meeting, we we got a lot more granular detail on these numbers. We will actually have uh, audited numbers as well. So. Good. Yeah. Thank you. There'll be it'll be a line item budget that'll be side by you know list every single line item budget to what we're proposing so you'll see it in all the subcategories great so thank you so we have um, completed or we'll be completing uh, several pro projects um, this fiscal year we have um, upgraded the electrical panel in the cart barn so we are able to plug in all the carts so that we don't staff doesn't have to rotate um, carts and that every uh, cart will be fully charged before it goes out for the day um, we, uh, in addition, we also uh, purchased and installed the cart batteries for the remaining half of the um, fleet that we were, did not, uh, were not able to get to last year. We met with Loman Golf um, uh, Architects regarding uh, the course and how it, um, what their vision for the course when the Route 41 project um, it, it goes through. Um, can I ask where we're at with that, Mary, or is it? Um, it's still it's in IDOT's hands right now. They're reviewing the um, design proposals that we've submitted, but we have not heard back from them. Yep. So we have our what we needed to do in terms of getting our yes data. Everything. IDOT, yeah. Everything's in. It's it. it's a typical IDOT. Hurry up and wait. Yep. So and then they'll give it back to us, and we'll need to hurry again. So, yeah. That's the way it works. Um, the uh, seventeen. Uh, 17 green and 18 tee box uh, did not come out of the winter um, very well at all. We um, did everything that we could to make it grow, but because of the shading issues as well as the uh, uh, low ground temperature, we just couldn't get it um, up and alive again. So we uh, stripped it half of it and put in um, new sod and it's uh it's looking pretty good right now that was seventh and eighth not Pardon? 17th and 18th it's seven seventh oh i'm sorry you're right seven yeah. seven and 18. yeah, yeah i'm seven sorry and eight. hey you saved me you're a right. question scoot thanks yeah gotcha sorry um <laughs> we we did we did meet with uh kempers their agronomist the cdga and uh the forestry department here regarding the shade issues uh, and because this is a oak grove and forestry does not do um, any kind of work on oaks until October, they were going to come in uh, 
in October, thin out some trees, open up some, um, take out some dead stuff, open up some an alley for some sunlight to get into those areas to help in, improve the, that area. Um, we have GA, Jeff. Uh, that's the Chicago District Golf Association. Uh, we have repairs to and purchase of some pond aerators, uh, the 18th and 2nd uh, whole ponds. Um, got a little scummy and Tommy does treat them with chemicals, but the best thing to do is get some aerators in there. So on 2 there will be a bubbler and on 18 there will be a small fountain. And uh, we are in the process of working with uh, other city departments and doing our due diligence to find out uh, the best course of action for uh, management of deer path. So, any questions? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Thank you, Jim. Right. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention I wanted to have this on the agenda tonight so at least you had a sense of how this, the season has unfolded so far. Um, just to give you a flavor of some of the things we've uh, been managing out there. And then when we have the meeting, um, there'll be a lot more in-depth information. So, Thanks, Jeff. Next item is comments by Director Mary. Um, yeah, just a couple. One is uh, I wanted to thank the staff and the community for their um, uh, attendance and participation in the Lake Forest Day run. It was a beautiful morning, one of the best Lake Forest days we've had in a while weather-wise, and um, it was really a neat race. Uh, we had um, an 84-year-old was our oldest participant, and she just burned up the course. She came in there strong, and it was just amazing to see. Our youngest was six years old. Um, we had lots of families that uh, ran the race together, and then um, middle school track uh, group came as well. So. It was really a great event for us, and um, uh, I think everybody had a really enjoyable day. Um, we've already touched upon it, but just to mention that we do have the Committee of the Whole and the Golf Advisory Committee will be joining us um, at a special meeting on August 28th, um, and it's primarily just to begin the discussion related to the future management options for the golf course. Our third year uh, contract with Kemper is wrapping up this year, so we're um, wanting to to move that forward with what is the best direction for us. So uh, we're working on that packet now and hope to have um, the majority of the packet out to you by the end of the week. And we may have um, a, remaining, a few remaining components to you early in the week next week. So just wanted to uh, mention that to you. Um, we have coming up a couple things. Um, our family camp out at the beach is coming up in the first week of September. Um, Jeff, I'm sorry, I missed, forgot the date of that. Do you remember the? Uh, September 6th and 7th. September 6th and 7th. So there, um, that's always a great uh, uh, special event. And we are still taking registration for fall. Um, so it's not too late to register for all of our classes. And we are busy gearing up for um, the libraries, having the book sale at our building again. And we did just wrap up um, our maintenance week at the rec center. So we're back up with our hours there. And the facility looks great. Um, you walk in, you immediately know we've painted. Um, and but fitness center equipment is all in and it's just uh, really the building looks really good so um, thanks to Sally and she oversees that project for uh, the department and um, we're we're pleased to be ready for fall so that's it great thank you Mary any comments by board members I just have one I drove by the uh, deer path uh, uh, tennis courts today and they lo they look like they're finished and, and a very nice job thank you great have they finished the uh track around it the, the path is all done um staff were today finishing the top dressing um the grading adjacent to the um the path itself that was put in and seating today so um that should be all done as well and we even spruced up the the uh, backboard the wall there the uh, provider we worked with was great she uh threw in some materials to do that as well so that whole project is complete um <clears throat> and then Everett uh, Playground, we are waiting for the equipment to come in. So as soon as that arrives, we anticipate, you know, starting that right after Labor Day. Great. Other comments? I would just say the 4th of July event was uh, fabulous. Had a great time, great weather, and thanks to staff for everyone. I know how much work you put in, or I probably don't know how much work you put in, <laughs> but I know you put in a lot of work behind the scenes to make uh, that a great event, and it, and it truly was. Thank you. Big year. Thanks, Dan. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Right, so we'll move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.
beauty.